Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're taking you to the Animal Kingdom. We're taking you to one of our favorite um, attractions. It's called Kilimanjaro Safari. It is because none of the trips that you take are ever the same because the animals behave very differently. So sit back, relax, and let's have some fun. Now, let's go. Hey guys, we're in the Kilimanjaro Safari. This is actually a very unique ride where um, every trip actually is very unique because of the animals. You don't know what you'll see or what you won't see. So we're going to take a uh, quick ride on this and we're going to have some fun. So you see those things? Those are concrete. Isn't that See if 
few animals hanging out out there, so we should be off to a pretty good start. Once we get to the bottom of the hill, we'll assess what we see down there. I already see an animal. I see two different animals hanging out right down there by the bottom of the hill, actually. You know, we are going to start off strong out here. There are Hartman's Mountain Zebras, a mom and baby pair. He's the baby. They're mountain zebras because they have very thick stripes on the back legs and no stripes on their stomach. My fun little baby zebra fact is that when they are first born, they actually memorize all of their mom's stripes. That way, should they ever be separated, they can use that kind of like a barcode to find mom, which I know is adorable. The other animal a little bit further back there is the Nankoli cattle, but we're going to go up here to look at There's another one. We're also following a Tusi cattle named after the tribe that originally domesticated them. They're in the bovine family of buffalo and bison. Those horns from point to point are anywhere between three to six feet. <laughs> Mm. Last thing you do want to hang out over here on my far left by this den. That's not super shocking. Animals that live in dens, they like to go out, they like to explore. They're not always home. So I'm not too, too worried about it. If you saw them back there, those are African wild dogs. I like caught a glimpse of them as they're going by. Inside those dark brown animals are sable antelopes. They have curved back horns that have the turkey things from jumping on their back. They're also one of the only antelopes that stand their ground on a fight should they need to. They will throw hooks as part of the reason I love them. This large light tan animal over here, there's actually two of them. Those are elands. On average, they are some of the tallest of the antelopes at about six feet tall. And then we'll turn right here and get a nice good view of one of these draft withers. One, there's normally a few. A group of them is called a tower. Very fitting for tallest animals in the world. They average at about 17 feet tall. And that's just an average. They can, of course, be taller or smaller. It really depends on age and genetics for them, but the official numbers are between 16 to 20 feet. And I'll be completely honest with you, we don't have any 20 foot draft like I know that because these trucks are 14 feet tall. They're not that much taller than this. that giraffe is that it was pretty much just spending its time eating. That's honestly what giraffe are going to spend most of their days doing, actually. You only sleep for a total of four hours every single day. That's never ever all at once. It's a maximum of about 30 minutes at a time, but in reality it really does tend to be closer to one to five minutes in between snacks. I already got this. Another quick meal of Nankoli over on our left hand side. Mommy got this. hand side all those grayish animals out to the right those are wildebeests. Thinking for them is called a confusion. They're some of the best migrators in the world. Out there in the wild they're going to come together for a mass migration. They can reach numbers up to about 1.5 million. If they start to run in a group that big they can actually kick up a dust storm. They can be seen all the way from space. shape spots that this Perfect. giraffe in particular has. Now, all of the ones out here are going to have those very particular spots because they uh, are beside giraffe, that's the type. And that's an easy way to tell them apart. Their spots are going to be very messy and jagged on the edges, whereas reticulated giraffe, their cousins, are going to have very, very straight edge spots. That's an easy, easy way to tell them apart. Identified by their large ears, kind of shaped like the continent of Africa. 
Whereas other elephants have smaller, rounder ears. But all of them, no matter the species or the gender, are going to have tusks. Those tusks are made of ivory. So unfortunately, out in the wild, that is the primary reason elephants are poached. One of the easiest things we can do to help prevent that and protect them is don't buy ivory products. I noticed the elephant flapping their ears, thank you. That's what I like to call ear conditioning. They have a lot of blood vessels back there, so when they're doing that, it's helping air pass over those blood vessels to help lower their body temperatures. Oh, lower their body temperatures so they don't get overheated. You might also notice some patches of discoloration on the elephant's back. That is kind of like their version of sunscreen. They get aggressive. They use someplace in dirt and mud to act as that barrier between them and the sun. They're actually not the only animal to do this either. Rhinos utilize it a lot, or hogs, a few others. Those are the top three that you can go off the top of my head. Besides, you can also use that technique in a survival situation should you ever need to. Not only does it look like a great of blocking out the sun, it's really good at blocking out the sun. Sense of smell. Now over here on my left, it's a lot harder to find than this particular set. 
sense. There are two cheetahs up there. Can you see them? Yeah. I guarantee you probably can. They are very, very good at camouflage. They don't even have to try. They just blend in real well. Now the good news is we have the possibility of seeing them if we go a little bit further up here because there is another group of cheetahs that likes to hang out here. Yeah, this is a more funky. There they are. You can see them a little bit better since they're just hanging out directly over there to the left in that area. There's about three of them. Two of them are cuddling. They're the fastest animals in the world. A group of cheetahs is called a coalition. It's my absolute favorite group name. I just think it sounds really cool. I should know what it means. A cheetah's wild fast are going to be more like sprinters. They don't run for very long or very far. But right here in front of us at Large Rock, we need to call the Kobe and the queen of the savannah herself. That is a female lion. She's hanging out up there on that middle rock. It's really nice to see her kind of up and about, or at least up and aware. They normally spend most of their days resting. They're nocturnal animals, which means they're going to be most active at night. They'll sleep or rest anywhere between 18 to 20 hours a day. It is normally females just like that when they go out and hunt and provide food to the group because the males are going to stay behind in order to protect the pride and the cubs. That's what a group of lions is called a pride. I know. That one song from Lion King makes so much more sense now. It's a matter of pride. It needs to make more sense to me. So is a group of snakes called Slytherin? <laughs> Thank you. That makes my whole life better because I'm so <laughs> Should there ever be any danger, they can just charge right on out and help protect their burrow and their families. And as we come up here, you long look to your right, you might be able to catch a glimpse of one of those ostriches. Large birds are flightless. They use their wings to help balance and to change directions while they run. On average, female ostriches are about six foot two inches. If I have to know that information, so do you. Like I said, they're a little bit harder to see from right here, but it is slightly possible. I'm going to stare this down if you like it. Over here to my right hand side, you should be able to get a quick glimpse of some ostrich eggs on the far right. Further down, out on the ground. So they are very large. That's so fine. They're also incredibly strong. They weigh about three to five pounds. They can be about two to three millimeters thick for the shell. And one of them's going to be equal to about two dozen chicken eggs. Also hold about 100 pounds worth of weight super easily. That means people can stand on them. It does make a little bit of practice. You know, it is possible. And up here, this is our warden's post. These are our warden's friends. They are Nigerian dwarf goats. They're quite small, but they're fully grown. They don't get any bigger than they are right now. Well, they can be kept as pets out here in Africa. They're mostly just kept as dairy goats. They're milk and cheese, so they're marketed villages here. Their milk actually fetches a really good price at market, too, as it is considered a little bit of a delicacy since it's very sweet milk. But unfortunately, my friends, this is sort of our end of our time here together on the reserve. It's really help us out with conservation efforts. It's the easiest thing that we do. back my friends and we hope you enjoyed the show please make sure you are subscribed to our channel so you will not miss another fantastic video from our channel please also leave a comment or share this video with your social media friends as it will help our channel 
with that said, we would like to thank you and we hope that you will have a fantastic and a magical day.